Welcome to the Massage Hodge podcast. My name is Nick Paterka, a licensed massage therapist in Portland, Oregon, and I am joined today by Bonnie Rich, a fellow massage therapist in Florida. Her company is called Massage or Not. That's not K N O T. And welcome to the show. Thanks so much. I You're appreciate here it. to participate in my ongoing 50 massage therapists, 50 states to learn how they do things differently in all the different states. And I, I really appreciate you being here. But before before we jump into Florida, I, I always like to get a little bit of background about how people came to massage therapy to begin with. So if you wouldn't mind a little origin story, I love hearing them. Sure. Um, in 1997, my husband died and I was in a young widow's support group. Mm. And one of the ladies there said, oh, I'm going to leave here and go get a massage. And I was, I just went, holy smokes, I've never had one in my life. Mm. I was 32 and she wouldn't let me leave that day without taking her therapist name and number and promising that I would make an appointment. Wow. And so I did. And the therapist just happened to be a mental health counselor as well. Mm. And I still remember her name. Her name is Carla Fisher. And right there on the table, I noticed how much it helped my brain. Mm. I still to this day couldn't tell you what she did technically, like all the strokes mm. and the moves and stuff like that, right. couldn't tell you. But I just know, I knew what it did for my brain. And right there on the table, I asked her about massage school. So that was April of 98. And in June of 98, I started massage school. Wow. Yeah. That was my only professional massage before. Yeah, that's so. interesting. Yeah, I think before I went to school, I'd only had one or two. But that's, mm -hmm. yeah, that, that is a, an interesting story. You never, you never know where life will take you. Right, exactly. Yeah. exactly. It's true. So if you wouldn't mind, let's jump into Florida. What does it take to get a massage therapy license in the state of Florida and to maintain a license there in Florida? Okay. Uh, to get a license, you have to go through a program that has to have at least 500 hours. Okay. Um, let's see, to renew your license every two years, it's we renew on the odd number of years. So next year we'll renew. We have to have 24 CEUs. Mm -hmm. um, they have to be Florida approved. And if you, if you took the test under NCTMB, which I did 20 odd years ago, that has to be approved, or right now it's the Emblex in Florida, which is the national certification. Um, so the that's the courses test. Have you to take the Emblex to become a therapist there. Now, now. twenty years ago, twenty plus. Oh, it was I see. <clears throat> yeah. Excuse me. So the courses have to be approved by both. So CEU providers really have to jump through some hoops. Um, and six of those twenty, no, six to eight of those courses have to be required courses. Florida laws ethics, medical errors, and we just had one added uh, last year regarding human trafficking oh. because Florida is one of the, it's either the top three or the top five in one of the top three to top five states with horrendous human trafficking. Orlando being a big city, especially around the tourist area. Right. And is that, is that <clears throat> trafficking happening at like places operating outside the realm of like under the auspices of being massage therapy locations or are they just t totally off the like I don't know I don't know if you heard any of my Ohio conversation but in Ohio you can you can actually be a re relaxation massage therapist without having a regular therapeutic clinical license it's like this mm -hmm. weird loophole designation but a lot of those places tend to be aligned right. with trafficking. Sure, sure. I mean, there's obviously the places, we all know the places that have big neon signs. Yeah. And they're open till 2 a.m. And typically those are human trafficking um, hotbeds. Yeah. And what we're finding now, the reason why it has become a required CEU is that a lot of those businesses are owned by the mafia here. Oh my. And there have been a few therapists that have actually gone into those places to see, to make sure before they reported them uh, to the powers that be. And the mafia has cameras all over these businesses. So they get the license number of this therapist. And there have been some therapists that have been hurt as retaliation. Wow. 
That's, so, high, that's high drama. I didn't, I didn't yeah. have no idea. Yeah. This is, unfortunately, this area, especially Orlando, is a hot bed. Um, if you think about it, there's a lot of Super Bowls that play down here in Miami, play, play down in Miami. Mm-hmm. That is major, major human trafficking um, business is done at, at every Super Bowl. So it's, it's pretty rough here. Yeah, what is what is sounds like something out of a nighttime, I don't know, law procedural drama, right. not out of real life. Right. It's, right. it's wild. Wow. Yeah. 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 So okay, so becoming a massage therapist in Florida, five hundred hours, M Blex, um, a decent continuing education requirement. Mm-hmm. It's all pretty straightforward. What about what's going on with your state? What's the state of your state? I Watching the news, I would it seems to be sort of a hotbed of controversy as far as the, the reaction to the coronavirus. That's what, a good way of putting it. Yeah. <laughs> what can you what would you say about, about Florida? Is it officially shut down? All that stuff. Um <clears throat> excuse me. On March the 20th, Governor DeSantis uh, put out a decree that all health healthcare providers, and we fall under that, we are governed by the Board of Massage Therapy, but we're under the Board of Health, okay. which licenses, you know, physical therapists, respiratory, everything. So mm-hmm. for us, um, he decreed that we had to shut down until at least May 8th. Oh. So, um, and that is oh, okay. all... May 8th, right. Yes. So that was all non-essential, all basically all non-life-saving services and procedures. Okay. So I want to see, I'm waiting to see, I don't know if he'll extend it, whatever. Um, it's difficult. There's so many layers of this that make it challenging because Mm -hmm. I think a lot of the country has seen our website is crashed. Our unemployment insurance website has crashed time and time again. Mm -hmm. And we have come to find out that Florida, um, the payout for unemployment insurance is one of the lowest in the country, Mm -hmm. uh, um, a whole $275 a week. Mm. So, um, it's been challenging. I've never gotten to be able to log on on websites. So I downloaded the paper form and sent it in. Wow. Who knows when I'll ever hear something from it. Right. So it's, it's challenging. Yeah, it definitely sounds like it. And is that still the case that May 8th therapists may go back to work? So far. Yeah. So far. Um, I mean, you've probably I, also seen that so, some states like Georgia in particular has... I mean, they're back today if they're allowed to be. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of therapists here are foaming at the mouth to get back to work. Yeah. And I'm just going to let me, my own business, this is my own thing. Yeah. I'm, I will not. I will not. I, I, because basically those people that will be going back to work and taking people, I hate to say it, but they're kind of the canary in the coal mines. Mm-hmm. To see, I mean, I want to wait um, to see what the second wave of, of infections, how that will be, Yeah, you know, two to four weeks later. I mean, I've got a medical background. I used to be a phlebotomist. I used to work in hospitals. Mm-hmm. My husband's a scientist, used to work in medical school labs. I mean, I, I don't, I'm not messing around with this. Yeah. 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 I just, uh, I earlier today I recorded and it, it, the episode about North Carolina will probably come out before you. And Lo- Laura Allen was making the case. <laughs> for um, waiting a full month after, before she yeah. was going to do any work again. Yeah. From yeah. when, uh, when, yeah, from when the main group of people go back in her state, she was going to wait another month on top of it. Right. That's yeah. about where I'm headed because yeah. I mean, a lot of, well, considering our state, Florida, we have a huge, huge population of retired people. That's people mm-hmm. over 65, which puts another challenge to it. I, a lot of my clientele are over 65. Mm-hmm. A lot of my clientele are pregnant. That's one of my special um, my specialties is pregnant women. Yeah, I mean, once a week I go to see a ninety three year old lady for twenty minutes, mm. and for me, I don't know if I could look myself in the mirror if I knew that I had a hand in her death. Right. I mean, because obviously, if some when something happens, when somebody passes, the health department is going to step in and try to figure out where that person picked it up from. And yeah. Yeah. No. I. I know. I'm not taking any chances with that. Yeah, too high of a risk. Yeah. So with the shutdown, with quarantine, what have you been doing to occupy yourself? And maybe how do you communicate with your clients? What have you been, what have you been doing in the meantime? 
I communicate generally with my clients once a week, even before this. I send out a newsletter once a week. Now, usually it's of, okay, this is my openings for the week, but obviously that hasn't been the mm-hmm. case. It's, um, these are things that can help you if you've got tension headaches. These are things that can help you if you've got, um, if you're dealing with anxiety, that's a large part of my clientele is people mm-hmm. with anxiety and panic disorders. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to put together, I typically teach in person an in person, uh, couples massage workshop, but I will probably be offering that via zoom. Um, so people that's, can do that in that their where homes. You teach people how to give each other body work. Yes. Oh, that's really, yes. yeah. I've been looking, trying to wrap my head around how to do some of that right. as well. It's fun. It's yeah. fun. It really is. I mean, I don't use tables cause, and that's my thing. It's who has a massage table at home other than a massage therapist, right. you know? Right. Um, yeah. So, um, other than that, I've just been doing a lot of self care. Mm-hmm. Um, watching a lot of movies, talking to my family in Maine, cooking a lot, um, just trying to wrap my brain around what's happening and really taking a step back and, and think about, okay, how do I want my career to look after this starts yeah. again? Um, and I'm going to be, I'm probably one of the most cautious. I might take one person, maybe two people a day with ample time. I mean, I usually keep 45 minutes in between each client. Yeah. And this will be even more so. Mm-hmm. That um, makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I did um, catch your most recent newsletter. I would encourage. I think you did a nice job with your most recent one. It's it had a lot of great tips. Just mm-hmm. I'm assuming often it's sort of geared towards your your personal clientele. But this one, I think anyone listening to this could go check it out for for different tips and strategies. And you put mm-hmm. a nice link on there to to a company that's making masks which mm-hmm. I, I think I might order myself some of those and they'll look pretty neat. Right. Right. I mean, yeah, it's just mostly talking to people where they're at right now. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah. Yeah. What do you, what do you think this does to massage therapy moving forward? How do you, I mean, you already alluded to maybe we're, we're as a, as an industry, we're going to see more time between clients. I hope so. I think, especially these I can large see how that, massage that's, chains. Yeah, the chains. I was going to say a hurdle for them because their entire business model is based on that. Burn them and turn them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which is why I never liked being a part of those. Though I do have some experience at at two of the big ones. But mm-hmm. yeah, what else do you see besides the hopefully the the bigger gaps between clients? I hope that we get really good and learn more about sanitation and disinfection Mm -hmm. because I can only speak for myself. I mean, the amount of schooling that you get in massage school is about that much. Mm -hmm. It's like wash your hands between each client, you know, change your sheets. But you know, most people just use the same blanket all day long, you know, and stuff like that. I mean, um, I, I've been pretty aggressive in that way. I mean, change. I mean, then again, I have, I have room for four blankets. I take a max of four people. So I have room for four blankets. Yeah. You know, in my practice, a lot of people don't. Um, I hope we get much better at learning about sanitation and disinfection. Mm -hmm. Um, I hope we get much better at really being honest with ourselves that, and I'm going to catch a lot of flack for this. Nobody will die without a massage. Nobody will die without yeah. a massage. Yeah, I I understand um, what you're saying. Yeah, I think there was a lot of a lot of disappointment when it you know the, some of the rules came out deeming massage therapy as non-essential, and I think people's you know were were a little bruised by that. And yeah, I think at the end of the day, like we we can understand that it's long-term care. I mean, what we do has tremendous value, mm-hmm. but it's not. Yeah, it's not life. In the acute stage, yeah. we need to step aside and let doctors and nurses do what they need to do. Yeah. Um, I kind of went through this similar, but very, very different. We had the pulse shooting um, in 2016 here in Orlando. And a lot of my colleagues wanted to get down, you know, where the shooting was and treat the, you know, the first responders. It's like, nope, nope, we got to step back. It's not the time for it. Mm. And it's it's similar in that way. It's like, we don't need to be there. They've got to do their job. And it's similar in this respect. Yeah. I can see given the nature of a lot of, a lot of people that are drawn to this career, you know, that 
first impulse is to go and help. Like, how can I use what I know mm-hmm. how to do to help people? Just let me do that. And right. But yeah, I think the, the best way to help is to be on the sideline. It's a time and place for everything. Yeah. I mean, because, I mean, I happen to have a partner slash husband who has a compromised immune system. Mm. You know, I, I'm not taking a chance. And, and working at a, a hospital lab, I saw how easy it is to catch things. Mm-hmm. I mean, I dealt with every specimen in the human body. Um, and I also saw how easy it is to cut down the spread. Mm. Um, yeah, it's, it's, there is a time and a place for everything. Yeah. So when you, when you can get back to work, whenever that, however that timeline plays out, have you thought about what, to, what you might expect to see? Like, I guess my question is, what is this touch deprivation, this tension, this anxiety? What is it doing to us physically as a culture? Is there anything you expect to, to need to address more in particular when you can get people back on the table? I can imagine tremendous anxiety, lots of headaches. Mm. Um, and that's when I'm, I have just a treatment just for headaches. And I, I'm going to put that out there to the world when the proper time comes for me, yeah. for me. Um, lots of teeth grinding, I would, ex- I would believe. Mm. I mean, headaches and TMJ issues um, yeah. tend to come with anxiety disorders. Yeah. Um, and I can... Like... like- concern about working on faces the proximity like it's that's kind of a- that's one of the things i'm going to have to think about because i typically i'm one of the few around here i actually work inside the mouth for tmj oh, yeah. issues mm-hmm. and yeah i'm gonna have to that's gonna probably be a year out before i offer that until there's a vaccine right um, um right now i plan on reaching out to um health care providers nurses and doctors because I can just see a wave of PTSD from them that will blow them out. I mean, I, I'm looking, probably those people, I can see a mass exodus from those people from their careers just from the PTSD. One of my clients happens to be a doctor mm. at a local hospital. And I check on her. It's like, how you doing? How you doing? You know, mm. um, even though, yeah. Um, yeah. I can just imagine. Um, yeah. Cause I deal with a lot of women. Um, my practice is women, female based. And I also deal with a lot of women from PTSD, from traumatic experiences, violence, sexual violence, and things like that. Um, so there's a tremendous amount of, amount of PTSD in those communities. And I can absolutely see that in medical professionals. I mean, we see it now from the first responders from the pulse shooting. Oh, wow. It's, it's a lot of them have had to retire at 36 because they can't go in anywhere mm-hmm. anymore. The people that the policemen that were on, you know, the first responders, they've had to retire at 36 and sue the, the city of Orlando just to get their pension. Mm. When you talk about PTSD, is it different for everyone in their body or does it, do you see patterns with it? do see patterns um it's the many manifestations of a kind of like anxiety i mean mm. i see headaches like i said a lot of jaw issues mm-hmm. um neck shoulders um and mostly it's it's i notice the most they just need a completely safe place to just be to to mm. feel more comfortable in their skin Mm-hmm. And maybe they haven't just felt comfortable in their own body for a long, long time. Mm. Um, Interesting. So that's one of the first things. If I do talk to somebody and I know if they offer that, this is what I'm dealing with. I let them know up front. Look, I don't talk during a massage ever. Mm. Unless you talk to me, this is your time. You didn't pay to hear me jibber jabber <laughs> through the whole session. No doubt. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's a big thing is, is for people going through that just to have a safe space, a quiet space to just be. Yeah, that's, so. that's, those are all great thoughts. So while I still have you here, I, I noticed on your site that one of the things you do is lymphatic drainage. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know this, isn't, this isn't about your state or anything, but uh, I've always been kind of curious about that. I've never had it done. 
and I, I think a lot of people wouldn't even know, you know, what therapists probably know what we're talking about, but uh, you know, people off the street might not. Could you talk a little bit about what that work looks and feels like and what it's good for? What it looks like? Uh, you might as well be watching paint dry on a wall. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's very not unsexy. It's incredibly slow, incredibly light. And it doesn't look like I'm doing, it doesn't feel like I'm doing anything. It's sort of, then, it's sort of the opposite of what the average client comes in looking for. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, it's super light. I mean, you've heard it. It's, it's literally the weight of a nickel is what you're yeah. applying, the yeah, pressure exactly. that you're applying. Um, I got into it because my husband is a three-time survivor of Lyme disease. Mm-hmm. And he also has lots of, um, he's a former marathon runner. So like four knee surgeries and all this kind of stuff. So I, I got into it to, he was my guinea pig. Mm. Um, and I've also noticed it, it just, I've noticed it helps with fibromyalgia issues. Mm. I still don't know why scientifically, but I, I wonder if it just helps kind of calm down the body just because it's such, such a rhythmic, a rhythmic kind of um, moves. Mm-hmm. It's just very relaxing to the system. And it, and it requires deep down. knowledge of the lymphatic system, like knowing where nodes are. Mine, yeah, mine was a week of say like eight to six or eight to seven every single day. Um, so it, it was pretty thorough. Okay. Yeah. What, what percentage of your practice is engaged with that? It depends on the time of year I notice uh, for some, for whatever reason, okay. you know, um, it's a smaller percentage. Yeah. And I notice when I put it on my website, I get people like you that just, Hey, I've heard about that. What is this? And mm-hmm. I've heard about it. And I had a, a woman who asked about it. Her teenage daughter was about to get spinal surgery. And I talked to her about it. I actually sent her videos because I knew, I mean, after spinal surgery, you can't, you can't bring anybody in. I mean, it would be very traumatic to bring your kid, you know, put him in a car, drive halfway right. across town, right. you know. So I sent her videos and I've gotten to the point, I would rather just somebody book an hour session with me with my regular massage rate. And I'll show you, say, if your partner needed it, I'll show you how to do that on him or her. Mm. That's easier for me because you're going to get much more relief by you doing it home. Um, you can get many more sessions, which is going to be much more, much better for the patient itself. Is there a benefit to lymphatic drainage as sort of a maintenance wellness kind of thing? Like, can it serve I've... people? Like, is it good for your immune system? Is there anything to it? Like in that regard? Well, if you think about it, uh, your lymph is just underneath your skin and your lymphatic system, that is your immune system. So that's why I help. That's why I do it for my husband who has Lyme disease. Um, I think it would be good for wellness and maintenance, but for the average patient, Mm -hmm. average client that is looking for like a massage, you know, it's, it's, it's hard for them to grasp that. Right. And it's and a, a traditional, quote unquote, if there is such a thing, massage, it does still affect the lymphatic system. Sure, sure. But not in that, not in that very specific way. Very specific way. way. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. Interesting. Well, thank you for talking yeah. about a lymphatic drainage for a second. Sure, sure. Something I, something I want to uh, learn more about and try out myself. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is great. Thanks so much for being here to talk about Florida and letting us know about the requirements there and chatting about the current situation. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. That's the Massage Hodge podcast all about Florida. We'll chat it for another minute after we stop this recording, but thanks again for being here. That's good. Thank you.